All right. Hi all, good morning once again. Uh, I'm Rahul and I manage the uh, intelligent automation group here at KGISO. Uh, thank you so much for joining in for the webinar today about embracing the new normal in insurance beyond COVID. I'm actually joined by my senior colleague and insurance expert, uh, Mr. Senthil. Uh, we actually call him NSK. So NSK, hi, good morning. Thank you so much for joining in. Good morning, Rahul. And hello everyone and uh, welcome to the today's webinar session. Thank All you right. for being here today. Super. Uh, so uh, uh, guys, let us uh, start off with a small introduction uh, about KGISL. Right. So we as KGISL, we had started around 25 years ago, uh, 1995, uh, with the Y2K programming, with the uh, SAP setup and with solutions. So from there to right now, it's been a long journey for us, right? And we've, we've grown by leaps and bounds, right? And uh, uh, in that over a period of time, we have actually established ourselves in the ASEAN region as well, uh, headquartered here in uh, Malaysia, right? Uh, if you see on screen, uh, we have, uh, we were uh, judged the technology fastest 500 Asia Pacific by Deloitte, right? So that's a good pat on the back for us. Uh, now again, as KGISL, we have been uh, constantly in touch with all of our insurance banking uh, companies here uh, to give out solutions, uh, say robotic process automation, uh, SAP practices, QEA, and ov obviously the digital uh, solutions, which we are going to talk about today. Right. Uh, our focus for today's discussion is going to be mainly Asia, so we'll focus on ASEAN. The other regions are, one, uh, are where we also operate out of. So all of us are aware of these numbers. All of us are uh, in this together, right? Uh, I think these numbers are from yesterday. Uh, today morning uh, numbers, I think we've already crossed uh, 3 million uh, infected cases worldwide, right? Uh, but the good news is that the infection rate is slowing down and the recovery rate is definitely increasing, right? The numbers for say Vietnam, Laos are relatively low and hence, uh, you know, the recovery rate is still, still much better. Right. So if you see the recovery rate for say Malaysia, it's 67%, Thailand, 89%. So obviously we uh, are slowly coming out of the whole uh, pandemic situation. But having said that, you know, we, we believe that uh, things like social distancing and work from home will continue for some more time. Right? Even though the uh, movement restrictions are eased out, uh, people will still be a little uh, more uh, skeptical to move out of their places. Uh, so that you know, they can be safe. The most important thing you know, that we feel uh, going into the new normal is that we'll have to start unlearning to distance ourselves from others once things to stabilize a bit. Right? Uh, organizations at this point are looking at their uh, operational expenditure and to in order to minimize and in order to optimize their bottom line. Right? So as, as part of that, uh, according to us, we want the insurance organizations to have a look at the digital solutions which could help them uh, during this time. Right? So I was actually able to pull out some numbers which are for the GDP forecasts. Right? So if you look on the left, the initial forecasts uh, were very, very promising. Right? So for, for Malaysia, it was around 4.8% growth. But obviously, post the whole pandemic, the growth forecasts have, have reduced. Right? But trust me, since this is a forecast, I, I'm, I'm sure that once things start to stabilize, uh, we all of us together will come back strong and we will be able to uh, overcome this. Right? Um, uh, here on the right actually is a quick uh, snapshot that I was able to uh, capture uh, from the ASEAN summit that happened on uh, 14th uh, April uh, amongst all of the ASEAN na uh, nations hosted by Vietnam to have a look at how they can uh, come together during this pandemic and work together so that the important aspects, you know, say of uh, basic supplies or medical equipments uh, do not fall short, right? And we as an ASEAN group or ASEAN region can come out of this stronger, right? Uh, governments are definitely stepping in to help wherever they can, right? So uh, I have quick news snapshots from multiple different countries stepping in for specifically their insurance sectors to provide the support that is required, right? So the governments are saying that they will take care of the entire uh, expenditure for the treatment of required. 
right? So let me let me actually focus a little more on the insurance at this point and give you a quick uh, snapshot or a quick report from McKinsey, right? So McKinsey actually uh, predicts that the, uh, it will take us right up to the end of this year uh, for us to come back fully from this uh, whole pandemic, right? Uh, with the oil and gas sector uh, being the most uh, affected ones, right? Followed by obviously travel and insurance, right? Uh, you know what? What is surprising, you know, and which which I am uh, very surprised. Uh, if, if you look at this report, it talks about disruption expected in new business underwriting due to dependency on paper applications. Right? This is a McKinsey report, and uh, in a McKinsey report, they are talking about the uh, long longer time it is going to take for insurance to come back because we are still very highly paper dependent. You know, that is where uh, we want to put forth and we want to. Uh, uh, mention the digital aspects or the digital solutions that can definitely help you come out of this much faster. Right now, uh, more from an insurance standpoint, we actually feel that the uh, pandemic is going to pan out in three different uh, stages or waves. Right. So currently, we are in the wave one, where definitely the insurance insurers are seeing a reduction in demand. Right. Uh, the renewals could be affected. The purchase of new policies, which were say in the middle, uh, would have dropped out. Uh, there will be a reduced purchase of newer policies because everybody is still trying to stay at home, stay away, and trying to save themselves. Right. Uh, from there, we will move into uh, something called as phase two, where uh, once the events, the bigger events, start cancelling, you know, they, then there will be a payout that will happen in terms of say life insurance or uh, income protection. Right. Uh, interestingly, uh, just the Tokyo Olympics was actually insured for two billion dollars, right? So uh, it's 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 going to be little little difficult for the uh, insurance uh, companies once the claims start trickling in. But definitely, the governments have already stepped in and they are helping out. Stage three is where you know I'm I'm very excited about because stage three is when the demand comes back. Right. Uh, all of us individuals plus the organizations will start reviewing the overall aspect and they will become a little more risk averse because of this. They the faith that they have in insurance will come back and that is where we think that it will improve or it will increase the demand moving ahead. From that aspect, you know, I've actually put a quick snapshot of what are the important aspects or what are the important business functions in any insurance organization. Okay? So obviously it starts off from a new business to underwriting, policy maintenance, billing and collection, and then claims. Right? As part of our today's discussion, I want to break this uh, entire thing into three different aspects. Right? So new business claims being one in second and uh, the middle portion, which is say back end processing being the third. Right? So we will focus our discussions in these three aspects today. Uh, <coughs> let us start off with the first aspect, which is the new business. Uh, I actually want to give a quick understanding of uh, what a flow of new business looks like. Right? So uh, uh, based on your organizations, this could be a little different, but this is a very generalized understanding of a new business acquisition. Right? So once I say as a prospect, understand that I need a specific policy, I will select, I will contact my agent or I'll uh, say contact the insurance company directly, then they'll assign an agent to me. I will uh, once the policy is shortlisted, I'll fill out all of the physical forms that are needed. I'll attach all of the other documents that are there along with it. Say my IC number, my address proof, all of those things, and I'll send it out to the uh, insurance organizations either through email or sorry, either through post or I'll you know, physically go and drop off at one of their branches or outlets. Right. So from there, uh, they'll actually scan the document, uh, put it into their content management system. It creates a CRM for them, which creates a log. Then there is a data entry operator who actually you know, physically views all of these documents and puts it into a digitized format. Uh, from there, it moves on to the validations uh, sector required, reviewer, and then the uh, policy is either approved or rejected. Uh, sorry, uh, right? Uh, based on that, right, right now, uh, we feel that the insurance companies have to have an alternative or a digital alternative for this entire thing, right? This entire process at this point is highly manual in nature because of which uh, you have physical forms, you need people to visit the branches or you need the agents to come and visit, say me as a prospect, which will be very difficult or may not happen at all during this movement restrictions. So having an alternative 
uh, to this entire process in a digital format will definitely help the insurers. Right? So that is the first use case that we want to present. I'll hand it over to Senthil to explain the solution. Uh, Senthil, over to you. Thank you, Rahul. Thank you. As you rightly mentioned, in, uh, in today's world, the word new normal has become a buzzword. So probably we, we, we don't know after this crisis or even in the new era, uh, if we ask a question, so who led the digital transformation of your uh, company? So probably it might be the COVID-19. So the, the thing is like the bottom message that we want to convey, we will be forced to, to uh, digitally enabled solutions for a better customer experience. So in that case, uh, in, in, in the new business uh, solution acquisition, right? So we, we, we can uh, propose a solution model or an approach that addresses the paper intensive nature to a technology supported model. So we'll look at a problem statement. So that's more appropriate at this stage. Let us say, for example, the, the, since there is an in, uh, paper intensive uh, model working out with the industry, right? insurance industry, right? So in this case, we are facing up with multiple problems like process inefficiency or poor data quality, or uh, it's a, whether it's a difficult in portability, hard copy storages, or cost of managing the data, or high level material costs, high level of labor costs, or it can be an hard copy or physical damage that is missing out. In addition to this, so these are all traditional problems that we are facing in our day-to-day -day life. Apart from this, so there is a restrictions in the movement. How do we address in, in addition to this? So we need to have a digitally enabled solutions that can address, address whatever the problems or the issues that we are facing in our day-to-day -day life. And so we, will, we should be able to address the moment control that we are facing now and bringing up the customers uh, to, to ensure they are able to access or purchase new policies, whatever it may be. Mm -hmm. So in that case, the solution we are looking at should be able to be very easily reachable to the customer and also it should be handy. So in that case, it, we, can, we should be having a mobile app kind of a solution which should uh, uh, enhance to reach them even if they are at remote places, right? So uh, and also it should be an tool to empower and manage the new business. So obviously to digitize any paper form to a e-form. With the electronic forms, so cap capturing data can be made simpler and more accurate in that case. In addition to whatever the problems or the uh, things that we are facing right now, so there might be a compliance matter. So one is bringing in the signature of the customer and another one is the authentication. So both should be addressed together. So in such a way. So let us look at a process model that can work for the current situation. Yeah, uh, the scenario is like this. The customer wants to buy a new policy. So where he might be looking at a customer portal or any other portals. But in, in addition to that, he will be required to be authenticated uh, with his identity or uh, with his uh, real signature that needs to be present as part of that. Okay, moving forward, we will not be having such uh, situations where we might need to go for a digitally enabled solutions that can address both these problems and uh, with, a, with a seamless uh, integration with the backend systems to ensure that it, the data is coming into the insurance company. So here, the customer captures the information or provides the information to be filled into the proposal form and then it's get validated based on the inbuilt validations and the business rules logics that's applied as part of the solution. And then it comes to the two parts. One is face recognition or uh, identifying the person from his uh, ID card or the NRIC that he has provided. And second one will be the signature. Let us look at one, one by one. Here, the face recognition can be obtained or verified with the AI technology where we will be able to compare the uh, IC photo with respect to the photo, lively photo that he, uh, he, is, he, is proper, he is allowed to take it as part of the process. 
So there are solutions that we can we have or we can propose to ensure that. So we will be able to ensure the uh, authenticity of the customer and with the documents that he is providing, and also uh, to ensure that we should be able to capture the digital signature, right? So this way, so we were we were able to uh, achieve the conformity that's been put forth by the regulatory bodies and uh, and even if there is any compliance to be satisfied with the com company's regular policies and regulations right so in this case uh, we will be able to have both the things in place and then the uh, captured information in the proposal form or whatever the document that needs to be submitted as part of the process then it can be shared into the internal or the legacy system so th from there on it it will uh, proceed to its uh, usual back end or bau process so i think i hope this will be a better solution model that can help us during such pandemic situations or even uh, in the new normal situation that we'll be having in future so to to explain it in an uh, illustrated model so let us look at a video that can help us to understand more about this In the world of business, filling up of forms is one of the constants. Every industry uses forms to drive and fuel their processes. There are challenges faced when filling up and maintaining these forms like Delay in submission time Consuming too much of storage space Access by unauthorized persons Unable to find a document Difficulty in editing the data High operating cost to eliminate these challenges more and more organizations are using the digital forms. Going digital not only reduces the cost of printing, distributing, and inventory expenses, but comes with other benefits that improves the organization of your workflow. The main purpose of the digital forms is to shorten work cycle and reduce the manual labor. Try offline eForm from KGISL, an offline application functionality which refers to the app's ability to offer all its features to users without network connectivity, including Wi-Fi. For example it stores the data in the app that box and automatically submits the forms once there is network connectivity. Our eForm solution comes with functionalities like Data Capturing Mobile app for Android and iOS Tracking the history of changes Capturing digital signature Easy to share over social media and other channels Secured and encrypted Offline desktop application Uploads supporting documents So this is the kind of solution that we, we, we should be looking at to ensure that uh, uh, we are able to address whatever the situation that is happening now and we are a the customers are able to reach us at the appropriate time. So without losing any business, we will be in a position to continue our business as usual. Correct. Uh, NHK, thank you so much. I think you know this is uh, indeed uh, definitely a good solution and uh, a need of the hour. Right? Uh, so interestingly, there is a question that we have. Uh, is there a digital solution regarding distributing the policy uh, documents digitally? Yes, Rahul. So as I mentioned earlier, right? So the receiving the documents or enabling such a front end solution alone doesn't solve the problem there are multiple silo systems in between right. in the back end processes that is happening which needs to be integrated seamlessly or even with the legacy system model there are solutions that can address to bridge the gap that is currently away, currently as part of the process so that that will enable us to help us in releasing or sending us the documents outside to uh, the customer or the agents or who or is the, pro the service providers or who the maybe. printing agencies as well. Right? Yeah, exactly, yeah. exactly. So in that case, so we should have a proper solution or bridging solutions in place that can help us in combating this problem. OK, let us uh, look at the problem statement, what it says. OK, so here is a uh, problem that we, uh, the manual or printed documents are sent out as part of the process from the legacy or the core system, right? So in that case, uh, sending out a document will take a week's time or more than that. Because 
there are uh, there is no proper seamless integration between the systems and it needs to reach the printing vendor or it should be a it's a lengthy process to get it printed and sending out even even with the with the kind of uh, other forms of digital solutions also there are still companies having with the legacy systems that are facing with the uh, facing to issue the paper based uh, policies as a part of the compliance it needs to be but it also needs to be addressed the, so that the, the the electronic copy or the digital copy is being received by the customer upfront or within a matter of time before it the hard copies are being sent out so this is a kind of a similar nature process or the solution that will will if we can adapt to that so we will be able to address those uh, issues that we are facing in the current day to day life right so some of the problem summary in the manual documentation patients are legacy system high processing time as i mentioned the longer average day delivery time depending on the spool file these are some of the technical issues that we will be facing uh, in the in the operational process like uh, cost of the printing or the delivery cost whatever it may be so in any scenario so we need to have an digitally enabled platform that can help us to automate the processes and also even it can address the people where, where we are away from work right so in that case so it will be helpful to ensure that so we have a seamless integrated model that can uh, deliver the document that is called, say, going out from the company we'll have look at a process flow a typical process flow in any legacy system kind of environment that, that we will be looking at so there is a core system the core system uh, does is will not be exposed to the external world and the information that needs to be captured from the core system we the, the data needs to be extracted and it needs to be processed into a spool file and then it sent to the uh, printing vendor for printing so this this itself approximately it might take almost 17 plus, plus days or more than 2 weeks so it's a, it's a huge time gap after we generate the policy when it reaches the customer right so in to address such a similar uh, typical process so the there can be a, a bot introduced to, to extract the information which can mimic the uh, sim manual process and uh, even it can work for a 24 hour 7 timeline and once the data is been extracted by the bot right so then it can be fed into a schedule kind of process or an ftp kind of process where the data resides for the document engine to extract then okay the document engine will be built in with a business logic and process operations validations checks everything so with this the, the document engine should be able to form it in form the data into a structured form to 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 enable it to send out in whatever is the requested format like uh, sending out as an email to the customer or it can be sms document uh, sms link that can be accessed by the customer to direct down di directly download the documents or it can be a di digital documents to the printing vendor so this is a sim uh, typical uh, model that can bridge the gaps in the bau process to ensure that there is a seamless integration and we are able to deliver the documents as and when required right so right so far we have been looking at uh, the customer facing applications of it so we have seen how the new business acquisition can happen with the digital platform and also how the uh, uh, document that is sending out from the insurance companies are addressed so then in such a form format so there are multiple other options that will be as part of the process like selecting the product benefits and providing the information related to the customers and whatever it may be so that forms the entire uh, solutioning for the customer facing applications what if or what else we need to address from the back end solutions uh, correct, correct, NSK. So, you know, uh, rightly mentioned. So, at this point, with the solution that we've spoken, uh, we have automated or we have tried to digitize e at least the front end applications. Uh, moving to the back end applications, right? Uh, there is a solution which is called as robotic process automation. 
uh, which can be used in this hour at this point, you know, where people are not in offices, uh, but they still want to want their BAU to continue uh, to have uh, the processes which can be seamlessly automated. Right. So let me come back to the uh, initial slide where we started off with. At this point, we have seen how we can digitize the new business uh, aspect of things. Let's have a look at the uh, back end processing that will help us handle underwriting, policy maintenance, billing and collection, right? Uh, which is using robotic process automation. So robotic process automation is nothing but a small, simple robot uh, which can mimic a user interaction or mimic a user action to interact with multiple different systems, multiple different applications to perform a transaction, to manipulate data, to trigger responses, right? multiple aspects. So any process which is at this point manual, which is high in volume, which is structured and which could be prone to errors are prime uh, examples or prime uh, indicators for RPA, right? Uh, again, from uh, why it should be looked at, right? I as an employee will work, say, for eight hours in a normal scenario. Right now, since I'm working from home, my again, my working style or my working schedule could be very, very erratic. Right. But from a robotic standpoint, since these are systems that are working in the back end continuously, they can actually help and support 24 cross 7 with a much, much higher speed and agility. Uh, compliance uh, is definitely a concern uh, when it comes to anything relating to uh, financial services. Right. Uh, but given process uh, or robotic process automation that is taken care of because anything that the robot does is logged and can be uh, bought back whenever required from an auditing standpoint, right? So this is the prime example of prime solution that we should look at automating multiple different backend uh, processes. So uh, this is a quick report from uh, our partner UiPath, who is one of the uh, top uh, RPA player to mention this, right? So uh, McKinsey actually calculates that 50% of the employee's time is spent in collecting and processing data alone, right? Just by using RPA, uh, actually 19% of the time can be reduced. 34% of the time can be reduced only in data processing and 23% of the time can be reduced for interaction time, right? stakeholder interaction. Again, from a claim handling standpoint, 30% of the time can be reduced and, and the claims can be uh, processed that much faster. Okay. And this is actually one of the examples from uh, FT500 insurer where using RPA, they were actually able to save 120 FTEs. Now, mind it, you know, this is not about that they they had to lay off 120 uh, FTEs and hence the saving come through. The thought process here is that they, uh, instead of hiring more people or instead of uh, bringing in additional FTEs, they were able to use automation to uh, use that cost from an automation standpoint. Right? So quick, quick numbers, you know, which will help you understand that they were actually automating some, uh, roughly around 800 odd processes, right? Which uh, they were able to do in 65% of the cost. Right? So uh, trust me, these numbers, uh, they look very huge, but uh, they are definitely possible. We have ourselves been working with uh, multiple insurance companies here in Malaysia, uh, Thailand, Vietnam, uh, Indonesia to implement all of these uh, aspects. Right, so here is a quick, quick uh, uh, preview for you uh, to help you start understanding and start thinking in terms of where this uh, RPA can fit in. Right, so right from claims, right, different kinds of claims, the entire processing of claims uh, could be your policy reporting, policy administrations, policy issuance, reissuance. Right, uh, not only the core functionality but also the supporting functionality like HR, admin, IT, all of those things can also be automated using uh, RPA. Right, so uh, let me let me come back again to our uh, base slide where uh, we have actually looked at uh, digitizing and automating portion of this. Uh, let me actually move on uh, to request NSK to help us understand from a claims standpoint, uh, what solution and what uh, digitization is actually possible. Right? Uh, before that, uh, let me actually give you a quick, simple uh, understanding of how a claims process actually looks like. Right? So if in case I am uh, one of the insurees and if I have to make a claim, 
once I notify the, I uh, once I notify my claim uh, to the, sorry about that. Once I notify my claim uh, to the company, uh, it gets registered internally. And for multiple different types of claims, the company will actually give uh, assign or assessor or a, a, a sur surveyor to have a look at the claim, right? So if in case it's a vehicle damage or it's a building damage or if it's a theft, right? There'll be an assessor that will come. So assessor has to visit the property or if in case it's a say a vehicle damage, I have to take the car to the garage and the assessor comes there uh, to review the damage, right? So once he has done the assessment, he'll send out an email uh, to the people and based on this, sorry, he'll send out the email to the insurance company uh, uh, detailing out the, uh, uh, the damage and based on that, the claims get processed, right? Now, understanding that in current context where there are movement restrictions in place, uh, neither is possible, right? So if, uh, I, I, the in, uh, assessor cannot come to the location, nor can I bring my car to the garage, for example, right? So again, we feel that a digital solution is something that would be required in this context. So again, I leave it to NSK to help us understand what's the digital solution and how the insurance companies can benefit from it. NSK. Yeah, uh, exactly, Rahul. So there are uh, multiple situations where the assessment of a vehicle, damaged vehicle or any other property is a manual intensive work, which involves a lot of physical activity and uh, movement uh, to the site location. And uh, there is a lot of time involved to ensure to get the details before we take it for the assessment. So in the similar uh, scenario, right? So what we are facing right now, there are uh, solutions that that we can adopt to ensure that to address the medic and the moment the problems that we are facing right now, and also the timely manner we we will be able to uh, assess the pro claims and deliver it to the or make this payment settlement to the customers. Right. So here, uh, let us take an uh, a typical or classical like classic example where a car met with an accident and at the accident site the insured is unable to take his car to the garage and uh, he is unable to um, make any new no, no claim notification or send the details about the accident for him to get the claim processed right so in that case so there there are there are solutions or ways to address this how do we address this so let us have a, a live video streaming kind of solution in place. The assessor from the custom and the from the insurance company end, or uh, even if he is working from home, so he will be able to view the live video of the uh, accident scene or location. Uh, he can direct the customer to to show him whatever the damage or the key area parts that happened as part of the accident and to get those details for his further assessment. So this is a kind of uh, a digital platform or the solution that we should be looking at to, to make the assessment remotely with the mobile camera in real time. And uh, also the, these videos or the, the photos that we have captured can be used for further uh, references in future. In whatever may be the situation, the key a point that we are trying to address here is like, uh, the assessment or the damaged vehicle uh, details are captured remotely and it is made available online immediately to ensure that we are making a faster settlement to the claimants. To, to illustrate the process, right? So this is the illustrated or the workflow process that involved in such scenario. So let us have a uh, simulated environment to have a better understanding about the process that happens in the real time and it will give us uh, better uh, to, to to ensure that so we, we we have such solutions in place to uh, combat these kind of situations any motor insurance claims inspecting the damaged vehicles is the most tedious and time consuming task the assessor inspects the vehicle physically and submits the report for dispersing the compensation which usually takes long. This results in delay in claims processing and accumulation of claims backlogs to the insurance firms. KGISL offers you a smart, feasible solution to overcome this turbulence, video assessment for quick settlement of claims. 
Using our video assessment for vehicle damage, insurers can now handle the claims remotely using any smartphone, laptop or tablet. On a single tap on the link received by SMS, the insured can get connected to the assessor. The damage suffered can be shown to the assessor without any hassle through the mobile device camera. The assessor evaluates the damage remotely and processes the claim saving the manual visit time. Now your customers can display the damage in real time and file claims faster and more accurately than ever before. Our video assessment solution can be easily integrated into any existing claims management system and comes with various features like HD audio clarity, live video recording facility, capture photo during the live video streaming. No mobile app is required to initiate the video call. Compatible in Android and iOS mobiles. So this is the kind of solution that we should be looking at uh, for future to ensure that we are able to access the accident scene of information or to get the for lively photos or the videos in place to, to pro proceed with the claims processing, right? So before we move on to uh, the next section, let us look at an, another video that can give us an advanced model where the insurance company should be focusing at in future. No, 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 it's just, it's just construction. Yeah, that's all, no, 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 I'm not, I'm not driving. Are you okay? Yeah, you? I'm good, I'm good. Oh, no, not you. Listen, I'm gonna have to call my agent. Mr. I'm gonna Burton? get right back to you. Mr. Burton, this is InsureCorp. We've received sensor data that indicates you were in an accident. Are you injured in any way? I'm not injured, no. Is anyone else injured? I don't believe so. Okay, where's my agent's number? We have pinpointed your location and we are showing your car is not drivable. So we are dispatching an Uber car to take you to your destination. That would be great. I'm pressing one, English, E-N-G-L-I, English. May we give your coordinates to our appraiser drone to perform the appraisal? Absolutely. We have received the photos, assessed the damage, authorized the repair, selected a qualified repair facility, and have dispatched a tow truck to take your vehicle to that facility. Perfect. Yes, hi, this is... Yes, a hold. We have looked up the other vehicle's insurance, transmitted the appropriate data to create the claim, and filed the California SR1 accident report. Can you confirm the information is correct on your phone, then hit the accept button? Uh, I'll check it right now. Okay, all done. Thank you. Your Uber car is arriving now. Ah, I see it coming. Accident, not payment, accident. Your tow truck should be there now. Don't forget to leave your keys in the vehicle. Thank you for using InsureCall, powered by Pivotal Labs. Oh, this was interesting, right? So this is the kind of solution that we should be looking at for future. And uh, Central, I'm sure, not, I'm, I'm yes, sure we, have, we, we are not very away from this, you know, because I've, I've read some uh, uh, articles and seen some videos that in few of the regions, say America or China, they're actually having drones delivering a lot of, uh, say, food or medical supplies at this point. So I'm sure, you know, this, this may not be a distant future, this could happen in the next few months for insurances as well, but this is definitely very exciting. Exactly, exactly. You are right. You are right, Rahul. And moreover, so not only these things, there are uh, researchers and uh, uh, testing or the piloting that goes around the world for an automated assessment. So with the photo, when we capture the photo with the deep learning technology, right? So we, should, we will be able to assess the damage of the vehicle automatically with the kind of... Uh, uh, the technology is available. So it is not necessarily to be a manual assessment who needs to go through the entire uh, estimation to uh, 
to identify which is right wrong all these things so that's the kind of uh, assessment process that we are looking at in the future so it, it is happening around the world and we are also doing search, certain researches in this aspect so we have enough data to ensure that we can we will be able to come up with this kind of solutions fantastic fantastic so uh, and it's actually surprisingly i know this is the next section uh, of your discussion but there is also a question that has come for that uh, which talks about is there a solution for digital extraction of the data for the printed documents say for claims or invoice yeah exactly yes. uh, the, there are solutions rahul like uh, we have so far we have been seeing looking at the scenarios where we are able to begin in the new business acquisition or it may be an uh, document that is going out of the uh, from the company right so apart from this there are uh, situations or scenarios we are facing in the day to day operations so whenever there is a document that is coming in either it can be a physical document or it can be an uh, electronic document also in that matter so the data capturing is a big issue right now there are uh, it's a it's a kind of large volume of data that needs to be captured as part of the process if there is a, a if we need to have a it's it's basically a manual intensive work where the person needs to be dedicatedly working for uh, such kind of monotonous work so in that case so in that case so there are solutions we know that the ocr kind of things can address such issues but that's not the way it the ocr alone is not capable of uh, getting us the accuracy level so we need to have an intelligent uh, or cognitive method to ensure that so we need we have a higher rate of accuracy when we do when we have the data extraction in place so where the ml based icr extraction can help us to give us a better accuracy and uh, it can be trained for any new templates that is coming into the process so this is the let me uh, show you a typical workflow or the process flow how it should be working in an automated or uh, automated data entry uh, environment so there is a document received in a physical form or it can be in an electronic form it's been the physical documents are scanned and those documents are pushed into an uh, designated uh, location from where the the ocr engine, the ocr icr engine the icr engine should be able to extract and uh, classify the information and post it into the respective target system in this way so we will we should be we will be able to achieve the data extraction faster and uh, with more accuracy and in case if we have such certain exemptions right so we will just use the manual uh, process to introduce that to to address those exception cases but moving forward with the trained model we will be able to achieve the 100% accuracy with, with the kind of exception handling and uh, it also helps us to extract more information that is what is captured in the current real world for example in the medical claims Uh, there are multiple documents that is been coming that is coming from the in, uh, hospitals and the other external uh, institutions or even from the customers so those kind of documents information only a summary of information or summary of the data is been extracted or uh, posted into the claim system for further processing there are lot more other informations which are available as part of that so which will be helpful for further analytical processes like uh, if it is a medical claims or health claims so we will be able to have enough information to for the fraud detection model building a fraud detection model or it can be used for comparative purposes for example if there is a surgery or a treatment that is happening the same kind of ha- happening for uh, the patient or the customer the same kind of treatment or the surgery that might be happening across the country with the different hospitals so we don't have enough information for us to compare what kind of uh, charges that has been made from different hospitals or different uh, institutions for the similar kind of treatment so so in order to achieve that we should be having an uh, automated extractor model that can give us more details for building up or coming up with uh, more predictions in future so that's the kind of uh, solutions that we should be looking at moving forward 
and uh, so like so with the with the kind of uh, solution that we have been proposing or that needs to be addressed as part of the situation that we are facing right now folks has been constantly insisting on certain traditional problems that needs to be addressed as addressed with the technology uh, it's a it's a 12 step process which includes the customer focus so far we have been doing or we have been enabling solutions only for customer services now we have to move towards the customer efficiency how we effectively we are able to address customer needs that's the kind of solution that we should be looking at or it can be an organizational structure that supports the seamless customer experience or it can be a, a change management so which needs a cultural transformation within the organization and uh, the transformational which uh, can be drive to the technology decision makers and uh, the technology technology decision making should involve the cisu people and uh, of course there should be a uh, seamless integration in place for us to ensure that the, the the data process or the operation happens very smoothly so in addition to that so while we are addressing uh, technology based or cutting edge technology for the customers in addition we also need to ensure that the internal uh, employees have a consumer grade uh, technology in place and moreover the logistics and supply chain needs to be improved and of course the data security privacy and data ethics cannot be compromised at any stage but with the whatever technology advancements that we are proposing that should be in place and um, with the evolution of products services and uh, processes we should be able to provide a better delivery and with the digitization and uh, personalized information that can guide the customers this is the kind of uh, methodology or steps that we need to adopt to ensure that we are uh, enabling uh, digitally enabled solutions and uh, finally we need to have an uh, strategic decision way, the way forward like in the in the current scenario insurers priority during this pandemic is to respond to customer and employee needs and to be prepared to strive and succeed in new in the new normal so hope we will be doing that so with the kind of uh, technology lies behind where there is a creation distribution and administration happens at the back end behind the scene so which should include solutions like uh, which can be accessed through smartphones or it can be an uh, information that we need to extract or gather from the consumer variables or it could be an uh, online policy handling as we looked at in the previous scenarios and moreover we should there should be a personalized offers nowadays the millennials are uh, more tech savvy where we should have a personalized offer that can attract for more products that we are offering and of course the claims of processing Uh, should be automated with the with the workflow kind of environment to ensure that we are able to service uh, faster and smooth and uh, the 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 zero system should be automated and there are predictive methods as i mentioned earlier so to ensure that either it could be a fraud detection or it could be a, a customer churn or even it could be an um, predictive underwriting so those are, there are multiple use cases and scenarios that is uh, required with the predictive methods to run a smooth business moving forward i think we have covered the thank you so much nsk i think you know this yeah. this was definitely uh, 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 fun and you know we i i'm sure we were able to give our uh, insurers a lot of idea about Uh, once they start to stabilize in the whole period what are the next steps that they should look at and they should start focusing on right? so there is actually one question uh, nsk which i'll need your help answering uh, how much time would these uh, solutions take for implementing and can it be done remotely in this lockdown scenario yeah no, not uh, it's not a big bang solutions that whatever we have proposed so far or we the scenarios that we have looked at that doesn't require a very large scale solutions to address all these things with the kind of uh, automated processes or introducing an automated process or with some tweaking with the technology solutions we should be able to implement uh, in a couple of months time so that's the kind of solution okay. that we should be looking at 
apart from the big bang or the the lengthier solutions that we whatever we intend to implement in future so that might take some more time so that's not that may not address the immediate situation that we are facing so it can be implemented in a couple of months time and uh, moreover productionizing is an important key factor factor that we we should be able to achieve in a shorter period of time right uh, so uh, how about what what kind of infra it infra is required for uh, these digital solutions is is the is the need uh, for a very huge requirement of infra not really so we we if they have an uh, online platform in place we should be able to replace their existing platform in such cases where we, we we don't have any online platforms in that case we we still can propose with the private cloud or or with the minimum uh, hardware requirement we should be able to achieve such solutions or, or we'll also be able to put say part of the solutions uh, as part of their current infrastructure or as part of their current solutions as well yes exactly so something right. like the face face recognition because i i found that very interesting the face recognition could be put as part of their say uh, uh, post systems you know which they would have for uh, your agent when agent goes to the customers for onboarding right yes really it doesn't require an uh, huge hardware to, to implement mm -hmm. it just need an uh, connectivity to to uh, to bring on board the solution correct i'll i'll take one uh, which was actually initially i've answered this online but i'll just for clarity i talks about can rpa connect with legacy systems in insurance right so definitely uh, insurance uh, uh, right now also has the core as a legacy system which is the green screen systems uh, from main, uh, the mainframe systems right so rpa works seamlessly with these solutions it can actually uh, uh, connect with the core something like an as400 right up to your uh, front end systems uh, giving you a seamless movement of interaction seam seamless movement of information internally right so it it works perfectly fine um uh, i think uh, if you could uh, take this one Uh, are these solutions available over cloud cloud enabled yeah, obviously so both both on premise and uh, okay. cloud uh, environments it supports mm -hmm. so uh, without compromising the regulatory compliances we should be able to implement that okay fantastic and uh, one i think there is one more which talks about are these uh, digital solutions only for insurance industries so not uh, really <laughs> definitely not right uh, the the idea was you know we we wanted to address uh, the concerns for insurance because uh, uh, you know we we feel that insurance will definitely be uh, a, a little more hit during these times and uh, they are under pressure right so we are trying to do our bit by suggesting the digital solutions which can help the insurance organizations uh, come up or come out of this pandemic uh, sooner but all of the solutions uh, presented today right from rpa to facial recognition for onboarding to inbound and outbound uh, of information right everything can be used across industries in multiple different aspects right? and uh, can be used in the supplementary sectors as well right? sorry and let's say you were you saying something i cut you in between yeah 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 the same thing i was referring to so exactly uh, as we looked at the few other scenarios like onboarding the customer the same can be applied to banking solutions also so where we will be able to have you place the face recognition and uh, as you rightly mentioned the inbound process so again banking or any other industry for that matter it has a lot of paperwork involved so where many of the information is left behind the paper alone it's not been captured it's not been utilized to the to the extent what it should be so that those those kind of solutions we are applicable for any other industry also perfect perfect so i think you know that that uh, brings us end to the whole uh, webinar i think we are we are doing very well on the time as well we have 4 minutes right yeah. so uh, thank you so much uh, everyone for joining in uh, central thank you so much for sharing the understanding right i i really hope uh, all of you have got uh, some idea about where uh, you should focus on uh, once uh, things start to stabilize so i've i've actually had discussions with you know a few of my uh, colleagues in insurance uh, companies and uh, right now what i understand they are still trying to figure out uh, how multiple different organize multiple different departments need to continue to work from home right so that's the challenge that they are still facing in in terms of say uh, infra setup or connectivity setup uh, or you know as simple as using say teams or zoom right 
so I'm sure you know once once all of these initial hiccups are moved on, uh, these are the things that they have to start looking at to bringing their uh, business back on track. And uh, you know, I, I I feel this very very strongly that uh, all of us are in this together, and uh, collectively we will definitely come out of this much stronger, and uh, we 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 will thrive, right? So thank you so much, and I I really hope all of you guys are staying safe, and uh, take care. Yeah, thank you, thank you so much for joining today, and stay home, stay safe. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Bye. Have a good day. Have a good day.